Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In the last video, we learned that Active Directory domain services is made up of both logical and physical components. ADDS logical components are structures that we use to implement an ADDS design that is appropriate for an organization. In this video, we will focus on the main logical components of Active Directory. The first logical component of Active Directory is Schema. A schema is a set of definitions of the object types and attributes that we use to define the objects created in Active Directory. The Active Directory schema elements are extensible, enabling applications to add their own object types to the directory or add attributes to the existing object types. Every object consists of attributes which store information about the object. For example, a user object can have attributes that specifies the user's name, address, telephone number, and other identifying information. This enables ADDS to function as a directory in the purest sense of the word, much like a telephone book. When we open a user object in the Active Directory Users and Computers console, we can see many of its attributes in its property sheet, like different types of usernames, office, telephone number, email address, and many more. The relationship between objects and their attributes is held in the schema, and all domain controllers in the forest hold a copy of the schema. Next logical component is OU. An OU is a container within the domain that contains users, groups, computers, and other OUs. They are used to provide for administrative simplification. With OUs, we can easily delegate administrative rights to a collection of objects by grouping them in an OU and assigning the right on that OU. We can also use group policy objects to configure user and computer settings and link those GPU settings to an OU, streamlining the configuration process. One OU is created by default when you install Active Directory Domain Services and create a domain. The name of the OU is Domain Controllers. In addition to OUs, we can also use built-in containers to group collections of objects together. There are a number of built-in containers including computers, built-in, managed service accounts, and users. Remember, we cannot link GPUs to built-in containers. Next logical component is forest. A forest is a collection of ADDS domains that share a common schema a common global catalog and are bound by automatically created two-way trust relationships. Most organizations choose to implement ADDS with a single forest. Reasons to use multiple forests include the requirement to provide for complete administrative separation between different parts of your organization and to support different object types and attributes in ADDS schema. A domain is a logical administrative unit that contains users, groups, computers, and other objects. Multiple domain can be part of one or several forests depending on your organization's needs. A domain maps to a specific partition and we can organize the domain with parent-child relationship to other domains. A domain tree is a collection of ADDS domains that share a common root domain and contiguous domain name system namespace. For example, sales.msftwebcast.com and marketing.msftwebcast.com share the common root msftwebcast.com. They also share a contiguous namespace msftwebcast.com. We can build our ADDS forest using a single tree 
or we can use multiple domain trees. Reasons for using multiple domain trees include the requirement to support multiple logical namespaces within our organization, perhaps because of mergers or acquisitions. The EDDS database is the central store of all the domain objects such as user accounts, computer accounts and groups. EDDS provides a searchable hierarchical directory and a method for applying configuration and security settings for objects in an enterprise. Each domain controller in a domain forest controlled by Active Directory Domain Services includes directory partitions. Directory partitions are also known as a naming context. A directory partition is a contiguous portion of the overall directory that has independent replication scope and scheduling data. By default, the Active Directory Domain Services for an enterprise contains four partitions. Schema partition, configuration partition, domain partition and application partition. Let's see them first. On Server Manager, click on Tools and select ADSI Edit. Right click on ADSI Edit and select Connect To. Select a well-known naming context, Configuration. Click OK. Expand Configuration, Expand Configuration again and click on Partitions. Let me maximize it. Here we can see the Active Directory partition names like Enterprise Configuration, Enterprise Schema and others. Open Run menu, type ADSI added.msc and press Enter key. Again, right click on ADSI Edit and select Connect to. This time, select Schema Partition to connect. Click OK. The Schema Partition contains the class Schema and attribute schema objects that define the types of object that can exist in the forest. Every domain controller in the forest has a replica of the same schema partition and that's the reason why we used to call it enterprise schema partition. The configuration partition contains the replication topology and other configuration data that must be replicated throughout the Active Directory forest. The configuration partition also store information about the physical structure of the active directory such as the sites and domains and where the domain controllers resides in enterprise. Configuration partition information is replicated to all domain controllers in our forest whether it is child domain or tree domain. Go back to other ADSI added to window. Right click on ADSI Edit and select Connect To. This time, make sure you have selected Default Naming Context. Click on OK. This is a Domain Partition. It contains the directory objects such as users, computers associated with the local domain. This looks like Active Directory Users and Computers snap in. A domain can have multiple domain controllers and a forest can have multiple domains. Each domain controller stores a full replica of the domain partition for its local domain but does not store replicas of the domain partition for other domains. That means suppose if you have two domains in your Active Directory forest then you will have same configuration and schema partition on each domain and you will have a different domain partition for each domain. For global catalog servers, in other domains, a read-only subset of the domain partition is replicated. This allows the global catalog server to know what is available in each domain so that other domain users can access resources, but changes to the domain partition can only be made from within the domain. The application partition introduced with Windows Server 2003. This holds information on many services like DNS, LDAP and ETC. There are two logical sub-partitions inside our DNS 
if we are using Active Directory Integrated DNS. Right click on ADSI Edit and select a connect to. At the connection point, select first radio button. Type DC is equal to domain DNS zones, DC is equal to MSFT webcast, DC is equal to com and click on OK to connect it. This will connect to domain DNS zones. It contains all DNS information for a particular domain. This information replicates across all domain controllers in the local domain in Active Directory Integrated DNS. Here, we can see the MSFTWebcast.com DNS zone. And all the records which we have stored in MSFTWebcast.com zone will be listed here. Open DNS Manager and compare with it. Let's expand for lookup zones and click on MSFT webcast. Here we have three host records, Win10, Win11 and WS2022. And and we can see the same records are available in Domain DNS Zones Partition, Win10, Win11, 2022 server. Again, right click on ADSI Edit, select Connect To. Again, select the radio button. Type DC is equal to Forest DNS Zones. DC is equal to MSFT Webcast. DC is equal to COM. Now, Click on OK to connect it. Forest DNS Zones Partition stores all DNS information for the whole forest. The data replicates across all domain controllers in every domain in that forest in Active Directory Integrated DNS. Here we can see the Forest DNS Zone which stores the underscore msds.msftwebcast.com DNS Zone. We can compare it in DNS Manager. Let's go to DNS Manager. And here we can see our zone is there, underscore mstcs.msftwebcast.com. Let's right click on this DNS zone and select properties. Here we can see the zone replication scope. It is all DNS servers, which are only domain controllers in this forest. And we can see the same thing for our domain DNS zone, uh, select properties. We can see the replication scope is all DNS servers in this domain only. So this DNS zone is stored in domain DNS zones partition and this DNS zone is stored in forest DNS zone partition. So we can confirm that we have Active Directory integrated DNS zones and those zones are stored in application partition. A unique Active Directory partition called the Global Catalog Partition exists in addition to these partitions. This keeps tracks of all the data on the global catalogs that are accessible within the forest. However, this is rarely utilized. I hope now you have a basic idea about the logical components of Active Directory and Active Directory partitions. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.